take your Bible this morning, if you would, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 16, please. <coughs> Just two verses we're going to read together this morning. <clears throat> verses 13 and 14. 1 Corinthians 16. And verses 13 and 14, we'll just read them in unison. And as we usually do, let's stand together to read the scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's word. And let's read verses 13 and 14 together on verse number 13. Ready? Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. Let all your things be done with charity. And let's pray, shall we? Father, add your blessing to the reading of these two verses of Scripture here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful music today, for the uh, praises we've been able to sing to Thee. Thank you for the words of these songs that uh, help us and encourage us and edify us. And Lord, I'm praying now that You will prepare our hearts and You'll use the special to continue to tune our heart to Your heart, that we'll all have ears to hear what You would say to each of us personally this morning. So, bless the special to that end. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Once I was trained in sin's dark path. No hope within could I see. They searched through heaven and found a Savior to save a poor lost soul like me. His hands were nails for 
<clears throat> That's good. Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer now. We thank you for a wonderful, wonderful Savior and a wonderful salvation that you provided for us <clears throat> through the giving of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for our sins. Lord, I'm praying now that you would minister to us through your word this morning. Thank you for each one that's gathered together here. Lord, I have no way of knowing when you put a message on my heart to give on a Sunday who will be in attendance, but I know that you know who will be in attendance. And so, Lord, I pray that each one in attendance today would say this message is God has for me this morning. And I pray you would help each of us to listen carefully to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit as he ministers the word of God to our hearts. So help me as I bring the message and help each individual Christian as they listen. May each of us receive exactly what you desire us to have today. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. <clears throat> Hope you'll be patient with my voice a little bit today. I don't know. must be allergies or something. Try to keep it clear <clears throat> for the message. I will preface the message with this. If you're, if you're used to or if you um, would be offended by not a politically correct uh, message, then you'll be, be prepared to be offended, okay? Um, but it will be biblically correct, amen? And I want to talk to you about that phrase in verse number 13, of 1 Corinthians 16 that says, Quit you like men. <clears throat> Quit you like men. And I'll explain what that means here in just a minute. Because of a lack of father figure in the home, listen carefully, in the last 30 years, and that's just since 1987, there's been a 550% increase in violent crimes. There's a 400% increase in illegitimate births. Babies born out of wedlock. 200% increase in teen pregnancies. A 300% increase in teen suicides. More than 70% of the juveniles that are in reformatories are come from fatherless homes. No dad at home. We have a great need for men in our day. <clears throat> we have a great need for men in our day. We don't have a weak leadership problem. We have a man problem. Uh, we don't have a lesbian problem. We have a man problem. We don't have a homosexual problem. We have a man problem. Uh, we don't have a gender identity problem. We have a man problem. We, need, uh, we have too many young men that need dad. And they need a there's, a, there's a difference between being a father and being a dad. And, and, and we need dads in the home. You know, there was a day when every boy looked up to his dad as his hero. They wanted to be like, his, like dad. And, and you think about even the early TV shows. Uh, how many remember Father Knows Best? And uh, uh, Leave It to Beaver. And when you think about those shows, you, you think about dad. And how they portrayed that. In fact, the title of the show was Father Knows Best. You fast forward that to today and it's Father Knows Nothing. Father's the bumbling idiot who everybody has to try to help along and get through life. That's how, how they portray him. But you think about um, whether it's um, uh, Father Knows Best or, or Ward Cleaver and Leave it to Beaver. You think about how Dad was always dressed at home. Whenever there was a meal around the table, Dad always had a shirt and some, usually a tie on and ate dinner. And, 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 and always around the house, even if it was a Saturday, I mean, you never saw him in a holy t-shirt and a, a, a pair of shorts. and uh, You never saw that. Never happened. They, they didn't portray Dad that way. And no wonder boys grew up saying, I want to be like my dad. Uh, he's my hero. It's awful tough for a young boy to look at dad sitting in t-shirts and, and boxer shorts on the couch watching television with a remote and, or playing Xbox all day and say, I want to be like my dad. He's my hero. It's awful difficult to, to say, that's my hero. Now, 
A man is not a man just because he can run faster or jump higher than somebody else. A man isn't a man because he can put the ball through the hoop. A man isn't a man because he can hit the ball further than someone else. A man isn't a man just because he can carry the football across the goal line. Okay, That doesn't make a man a man. <clears throat> the church at Corinth, and let me remind you though, he's addressing men here, ladies. He's writing the epistle to the whole church. And what applies here uh, would apply to men and women both. And you're going to see that as we go on to the message today. But particularly, the church at Corinth was a carnal church. It was a, it, they, were, they were baby. They were act, though they, weren't, they may have been saved a long time, they were still spiritually very immature. And so he's addressing the men here to uh, grow up. Uh, they, we're going to talk about that word quit. The, the quit uh, there is really, the quit ye like men or quit you like men is really one word there. And it's a word in drizomai. And, and it really means, we would say in our language today, man up. Man up. Uh, get, get with it. Be a man. David uh, telling Solomon on his deathbed, be strong and show thyself a man. That's, that's what he's talking about here. And, and it's the only time it's used in the Bible. And, and so it's be men. He's addressing the men of Corinth saying, why don't you step up and be the men that God wants you to be. What does it mean then to be a man? What does it mean here when Paul says man up? I think number one, it means to watch ye. That's what he said. First two words, verse 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith. Watch ye means to be on guard. Watch ye means to stay awake. When you're on watch, you're supposed to be watching. Okay, And you don't do that with your eyes closed. So you have to do that watching, being on guard. And can I stay? You know, the first thing I think we ought to stay awake in, fellas, is men stay awake in prayer. Stay awake in prayer. Can I say a man will pray? A Christian man will pray. The mark of a real Christian man is one who will discipline himself to pray. Don't call yourself a, a Christian man and a godly man if you don't discipline yourself to pray. It needs to be a priority in your life. You know what I found out? I found out long, long ago, I make, time to do the th for the, I make time to do the things I really want to do. The things, fellas, the things we really want to do, we make time for. We'll find a way to do them. And you know what else I found out? I found out that the things I don't really want to do, I really work hard at finding excuses for. And, and that's just reality. And so let's make sure that we have the discipline to pray. You know, the Lord Jesus did many amazing things on earth in His ministry here on earth. Think about what the disciples got to witness Him doing. Has He healed the sick? Has He raised people from the dead? Has He made blind eyes to see? The deaf to hear? The lame to walk? They watched Him feed 5,000 people with just, just five loaves and two fishes? And then have... Twelve basketfuls left over. And, and these are not, <clears throat> it's interesting, the, the, word, the word basket <clears throat> is the same word when Paul, they had to let, get Paul escape out of the city and they let him over the wall in a basket. That same word basket, it's big enough that Paul could fit in there and they could let him down over the wall. Those are the baskets, you're not talking about a little, you know, little picnic basket full. This is the basket that you could put a man in. Those are the same word basket that's used in, in the parable of the, or the, the story of the feeding of 5,000. And so these were big baskets. They saw that. They, they, they saw him stand up and rebuke the wind and the waves and the storm and everything got calm. And they said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. It's amazing the things they, they, that took place and they saw. They, they saw Peter go down and, and he said, just, just throw your hook in there and catch a fish and then open the fish's mouth and there'll be money in there. Are you kidding me? Huh? I mean, you fishermen in here have had that happen. It doesn't happen. They saw that take place. And yet, you know what's interesting? None of them ever said, Lord, teach us to fish like that. No one ever said, Lord, teach us to multiply loaves and fishes like you did. Lord, teach us to open the blind eyes. Teach us to open the deaf ears. They never said that. You know what they did say? Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. 
Because what impressed them the most was the ability for Jesus to pray. Oh, set your time to pray, man. Set your time to pray. Set your time in your day when you say, this is the time I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to pray for my family. I'm going to pray for my wife, pray for my children, pray for my grandchildren. Hey, if your children are still young, praying for their future mates who they'll meet, praying for God to, to bring the right person in their life, that God will be preparing that person for your son or your daughter. Don't let, listen, pray for your church, pray for your pastor, pray for the missionaries. Oh, there's so much to pray for. And, and take time to pray. Don't let sleep interfere. Don't let tiredness interfere. Don't let people interfere. Man, the words, let's pray, ought to be heard at your house. There ought to be times when your children and your wife, you just say, hey, let's pray about that. Certainly you pray before you eat. But certainly, there will be certain times when situations arise or phone call comes in that somebody's in trouble or somebody has an illness or somebody's in the hospital. You say, hey, let's just stop and pray for them right now. Amen. But pray. Pray. And then it means not only to be awake in prayer, but I think it means also to be awake or be on guard about temptation. You know, the Bible says the devil's a roaring lion and he goes about seeking whom he may devour. And we've seen with the rise with the statistics we just read at the beginning of the message how he's after the home. He's after the, the men and the women and the children in the home. He's out to destroy the home as we know it. It is, it is, it is very rare indeed anymore to find a child that, that, that has grown up with the same mother and the same father. That's not the majority anymore. That's a minority. And, and, and so he's seeking whom he may devour. And, and so we have to be on guard. Guard yourself and your family against temptation. Men, that's your responsibility as the head of your home. That's your responsibility to guard what comes in on the television. You have to guard what comes in on that computer. Guard what comes in on the radio. Guard what music you have. Guard the DVDs. Guard the friends in the neighborhood that your children are around, and people that they spend time with, the people they're with at school. Be on guard against temptation. Don't be slack about that. Listen, now, I, I, I want to help you with this, and, and I know this isn't popular, but as long as the children are living under your roof, they have, they, there's no privacy. Don't say, well, you can't go into my room without me asking me my permission. I got news for you. That room is in my house and this is my house. And I'll look at your computer and look at your phone and, and have access to these at all times. See, why? I know the devil's out there. Brother Currington gives that illustration in one of his, his uh, principles about if you knew, if you were inside your house and you saw a lion outside, Maybe you're the broadcast that, you know, a lion's escaped and it's in the neighborhood and you saw him in your backyard. You would immediately go to every door and every window and make sure it's securely locked. You would say, I don't want to find any way at all that this lion would get into my house and hurt me or my family. I would do all, make sure everything is safe and you'd walk around and make sure it's safe and make sure everything's secure. Well, I tell you, there is a lion outside your house and it's called the devil. And he's looking for entrance. He's looking for a way to get in. Don't be slack in guarding your family against temptation. That's your job, Dad. You're on guard. Guard against temptation. Uh, watch ye. Be on the watch. You're the one on the lookout. You can't afford to be asleep at the switch. You can't afford to say, Dad, well, I didn't know that was going on. Well, I didn't know they were doing that. I didn't know they were looking at that. I didn't know they were listening to that. It's your job to know. It's your job to be on guard. Watch ye. It means be on guard. It means stay awake. Then, notice secondly in verse 13, it says, Stand fast in the faith. Stand fast in the faith. That means this. It means you serve God. Period. You serve God. Like Joshua, you say, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That wasn't said by Mrs. Joshua. That was said by Joshua. He was the one speaking up. 
As a father, you stand up and you say, we are going to church. Now, God bless you, Mom. If you're here and Dad doesn't come to church, God bless you. You stand up and you bring the kids to church. And you, you do what you ought to do. But Dad, that's your responsibility. That's your role to say, my, my family's going to go to church. And listen, we're going to be in church Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. We had two different men last night at the barbecue stand up and, and talk about how they they thank God they grew up in a home where dad and uh, it was, it was dad took them to church and dad made them be in church. And I grew up in a home like that. I grew up Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. If, we, if a church, when we moved location, if a church didn't have a Sunday night service or Wednesday night service, they weren't even considered. That, that just wasn't even on the map. And, and if the doors were open, we were going to be there. And, and listen, so that, listen I, I don't say, oh, my dad made me go when I was a kid. He forced that religion down my throat so I don't go to church now. That's a bunch of baloney. You don't, don't hide behind that, my friend. Don't hide behind my parents made me go to church. They made you brush your teeth. Do you still do that? They made you take a bath. Do you still do that? They made you go to school and you went to school. Come on now. No, listen, if you don't want to be in the house of God and you don't be around the people of God and you don't want to hear the preaching of the Word of God, then it's simply because your heart's wicked and you don't want to hear it. Plain and simple. Just admit it. Be honest with yourself about that. Listen, Dad, get your family to church. You lead the way. You're not going to get anywhere saying, this is what, this is what you're supposed to do. Now you guys go and have a good time. All right? You're going to get what you are, not what you say. Be faithful, Dad. Serve God. You're not going to build a solid Christian life and you're not going to build a solid Christian home on one hour of church a week. Thanks, Brett. Okay. Got one guy with me. Huh? Not going to happen. It is not going to happen. I can't tell you how many times I have to talk to people during a week and, and give them counsel and give them help. And what I have to do is tell them Sunday night sermon or Wednesday night sermon because they didn't come to church to hear it. And I have to repeat that sermon that they should have been in church to hear in the first place. But they weren't here. Be faithful. Be in. Be, be in the local church. Serve God through your local church. Do something for God in your church. Be an usher. Sing in the choir. Help in children's church. Take a turn in the nursery. Uh, play an instrument, drive a bus, teach Sunday school class, do something for God. Hey, stand at the door and greet people when they come in say, welcome to Bible Baptist Church, good to see you this morning. You know, something really stuck out to me several weeks ago, oh, about three years ago, my daughter and son-in-law changed uh, to a different church up in uh, Maslin, Canton area. And my mother-in-law, my, my mom asked my son-in-law, what was it that impressed you when you went to that church? You know what he said? He said, the moment we walked in the door, somebody greeted us and stayed with us the whole time. Took, took the kids where they belong, got us to our class where we belong, and they just stayed with us. And we felt very welcome. We felt like we belonged right there. You see? And I think about, now you think about that when someone walks through these doors. What do they feel like? You've been on vacation, walk into a church, and everybody's going around doing their thing, and you're kind of like, <laughs> Hey. Anybody know we're here? See? And, and if we're not careful, we get that way. We get busy in our, in our busyness on Sunday morning and seeing all our friends, and we're not ministering to people. You can minister doing that. You can, you can minister uh, sitting and, and, and looking at folks and praying for them. But do something for the Lord. Be, be happy in the service of the King. Happy in the service of the king. It means you serve God. Stand fast in the faith. Secondly, it means this. It means you have some standards to live by. Stand fast means you're fastened to it. It means that you are firmly fixed on it. You don't waver. It's not the dad who, who stands firm that loses their children. It's the dads that waver. It's the dads that cave in that don't stand fast. It's the David who will not correct his son that gets the Absalom. It's Eli's that will not restrain their sons that get the Hophni's and the Phineas's. Stand fast in the faith. 
You say, oh, preacher, it's the 21st century. I know. But stand fast in the faith. Oh, my, my, my kid said everybody's doing it. Well, I don't care if everybody's doing it. Stand fast in the faith. Hold to your standards. Hold to what's right. Stay, hold fast to that which is good. Don't let it go. Don't drop down. Don't let it let them off the hook. Stay strong in what you believe. Boy, so many are dropping today. Everybody has one of these. Well, they'll have one and you won't. Stand fast in the faith. Be a man. See, that takes a man. And, and, and drizzle my. Man up. Be a man about it. Stand fast in the faith. Be on guard. It means stay awake. Be on guard. Watch ye. And then stand fast in the faith. Serve God. Have standards to live by. Number three. Here's our phrase. Quit you like men. Quit you like men. That's your character. That's the word man up. In other words, stop making excuses and start doing what's right. Men, stop making excuses. Start doing what's right. Quit saying, I can't, and be a man. Quit saying, it's hard, and be a man. Quit saying, I'll try, and be a man. Quit being a lazy, selfish, defensive, lace-on-your-underwear type guy, and be a man. I told you it wouldn't be politically correct, didn't I? Quit ye like men. Quit ye like men. I mean, a man like Joseph who, who, who would flee Potiphar's wife because he says, I'm not going to sin against God. I'm not going to indulge the, the appetites. I'm not going to indulge the flesh. God was developing his character. A man like Daniel will say, I'll purpose in my heart not to defile myself with the king's meat and the king's drink. And Daniel, though hundreds of boys, if not thousands of young men, were captive, they took the cream of the crop at the first invasion, and Daniel was one of those. And it was only Daniel and his three friends, as far as we know in Scripture, that said, I'm not going to eat that stuff. I'm not going to drink that stuff. All the other boys, as far as we know, went along with that program. And I'm sure that Daniel heard the criticism. I'm sure he heard the murmuring from the other guys. What kind of fanatic are you? Just like you'll hear it when you say, hey, I've got to go to church Sunday night and Wednesday night. I need to be in the house of God. Oh, now, who said you had to go to church all that time? You, you're not going to wear that? You don't wear that? No, I don't wear that. Oh, man, you don't have to be that weird. What are you, some kind of a weirdo? I guess I'm a weirdo for Jesus. But, but be strong. See, don't make excuses. Have some character. Daniel purposed in his heart. He had some character. He manned up. A man like Uriah, who when David brought him home to try to cover up David's sin. Remember, he tried to send Uriah home to his wife. Hey, go home. Enjoy your wife. Have a night at home, and then we'll send you back to the battle tomorrow. And when David got up in the morning, what did they tell him about Uriah? He never went home. He slept on your doorstep. And they asked Uriah, why didn't you go home? Remember what he said? He said, how can I, when all my brothers are out there fighting the battle and they're away from their families, how can I go home and enjoy my wife? I can't do that. That's wrong. Boy, that's Andrizomai. That's a man. That's somebody who's manning up to the situation. Character. Character. That's manhood. Men who know how to say no. Men who when they're in Rome, don't do as the Romans do, they do as God's Word says to do. Listen to me, be, be careful. I, I, I want you to take a vacation, I want you to have time away, everybody needs that. But don't you take time away from God on your vacation. And as you behave when you're home, you behave when you're on vacation. Don't you get away from home and say, well, we're away from home, no one will know. No, God knows God knows. What's right, is, what's right now is right when you're on vacation. What's right now is right when you're on vacation. Is this on? What's right now is right when you're on vacation. Okay? Men who are willing to go upstream against the downstream of society. A man that will not let nicotine control him. 
A man that will not let a can of beer control him. A man that will not let a lustful eye control him. Get some character. Get some character. Quit your excuses. Not, not, well, I'll try. You know what I'll try means? I'm leaving room to fail. That's what I'll try means. I'm leaving room for me not to do it. For your son's sake. For your daughter's sake. Show thyself a man. Man up. Show them what a man is like. Can I, can I, I reminded the guys last night at the barbecue, no one can take the place of dad. Nobody. Uh, the, the pastor can't do it. The youth pastor can't do it. The song leader can't do it. The, 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 any Sunday school teacher can't do it. Nobody can take the place of dad. Take time with your boys. Take time to teach your sons, your daughters, the word of God. Teach them. I remember reading about a boy who was 17 years old. He was killed. He was out with eight other teenagers at 2 o'clock a.m. on a Friday night, Saturday morning. And I remember the father crying and saying, my, my, my dear, precious boy is taken away. I'm going to ask you a question, Dad. If he's so dear and precious to you, what's he doing out at 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning? If he's dear and precious to you, you don't let him out at all hours of the night. All through my high school years, I had a midnight curfew. I'd be in by 12 o'clock. He said, why'd you have to be in at 12 o'clock? Because my dad said, nothing good happens after midnight. Say, is that true? I don't know. I never went out after midnight. <laughs> you come on midnight. I was always on midnight, buddy. You think, boy, he was pretty tough. You should have been my sister. Her curfew was 11. And that's not fair. You tell my dad that. That never, that never flew in our house. Whatever dad said went. And, and I'm glad it did. I'm glad I did. I, I'm glad I was home at midnight. I'm glad I had someone who cared enough about me. In 1 Corinthians, you're in chapter 16. Would you turn to your left to chapter 14 and look at a verse with me? 1 Corinthians 14. Notice with me verse number 20. Verse 20. Notice Paul writes, Brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be children. Malice and anger, holding grudges, having ill feelings towards someone else. You know, kids, kids forget about that so easily and so quickly. He said in malice be that way. But in understanding be what? Be men. Grow up. In understanding, be a man. And so on Father's Day 2017, fellas, I say in drizzle my, quit ye like men. Quit you like men. Listen, grow up. Man up. Be a man. Have some character. It was a man, being a man, when Alexander Hamilton aimed high and fired over Aaron Burr's head. Benjamin Gegenheim was a man on the Titanic he gave his life jacket to a woman passenger and then went and put on his white tie and tails so he could die like a gentleman. That's being a man. The same year, 1912, Captain Lawrence Oates became so frostbitten and lame on Robert Scott's ill-fated expedition to the South Pole Rather than delay the others in their trek back from the pole, he went to the opening of the tent one night and said, I'm just going outside and I may be some time. And he walked to his death in the blizzard. So he wouldn't delay the rest of the party. Be a man. A father drove a team of spirited horses into a village and he dropped the reins for a minute and stepped into the general store. Out in the street, somebody made an unnecessary noise and it spooked the horses and they took off. He took off out of the store chasing after the horses and wagon. 
With almost superhuman strength, he lunged and grabbed the reins of the horses, but they continued to drag him through the rocks and down the road. People were screaming at him, let go, let go, you fool, let go. But he held on. After a while, the wagon came to a stop, and he slumped on the road. They all came up yelling at him, you fool, you fool. All you had to do was turn the reins loose. Raising up on one arm, he pointed to the back of the wagon. And there in the back of the wagon under a blanket was his young son lying on a pallet. No one wondered then why he did what he did. No one thought he was a fool then. Is it too much to ask your dad to pray? Is it too much to ask you to be on guard against temptation in your home? Is it asking uh, too much to have you serve God with your life? To be an example to your family of what it is to serve God and live holy before Him? Is it too much? Quit ye like men. In England during World War II, the two principal slogans were stand firm and carry on. Stand firm and carry on. The German Blitzkrieg is pushing forward, and they were always urged to stand firm and carry on. That's the message we need today. For the blitzkrieg of Satan is pushing on, and he's pushing on against the church of Jesus Christ and against believers, and we need to stand firm and carry on. We need to quit you like men. We need to watch ye and stand fast in the faith. Therefore, my beloved brethren, Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is never in vain in the Lord. We we, we put on the whole armor of God that we may stand against the wiles of the devil. Men today on Father's Day 2017, and drizzle mine. Be a man. Man up. Quit you like men. Watch ye. Be strong in the faith. Let's pray together. Shall we, Father, take the truth here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for these admonitions from the Apostle Paul to the people in Corinth. And Lord, surely as these these directives are to the men, they're certainly directives that all of us could use. All of us should pray. All of us should be on guard against temptation. All of us should be serving God. All of us should have holy standards to live by. All of us should be people, men and women of character, doing what we know is right to do, whether we feel like doing it or not. Oh, help us to live by have to until the want to comes back around. Lord, I pray we'd be men and women of character. I pray, Lord, you've spoken to our hearts this morning. I pray, Lord, that the men in the room, the Father's room, would say, I'm going to be a man. I'm going to quit me like a man. I'm going to man up and be a man of God. pray there'll be women in the room say, I am going to be a woman of God. I want these things in my life as well. I can be pleasing in his sight. I want to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Make that our prayer. Give us your help on this Father's Day 2017. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. I'll finish praying in just a minute. I wonder how many folks in the room today would say, Pastor, with our heads bowed and eyes closed, if If I were to die this morning, I know for sure that I would go to heaven because my faith is in Jesus Christ as my Savior. I've had a point in my life when I knew I was a sinner and I knew I needed a Savior and I knew Jesus was the Savior I needed. And I called on Jesus and asked Him to save my soul. And Pastor, I'm trusting Him as my Savior. And I know that if something happened to me today and I were to die, I'd go to heaven. Here's my hand as a testimony of that. Would you slip it up right now and say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. Would you slip your hand up? 
Amen. God bless you. You may put them down. Is there anybody here today who would say, Pastor, I don't know for sure that I'm saved. I don't know that I ever had a time when I trusted Jesus as my Savior. Would you let me pray for you? I'll not embarrass you or call you out, but I'll pray for you. Would you slip your hand up and just say, Pastor, pray for me this morning? All right. I wonder how many believers here today. That's who the message was for. How many believers would say, Pastor, God, the Spirit of God stopped at my seat this morning. He ministered to my heart today. And I appreciate you praying for me this morning. There's some decisions I'm making in my life this morning. As a result of that message, Pastor, pray for me this morning. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Amen. Amen. That's good. You may put them down. In a moment, I'm going to pray. We'll have our invitation. Listen, my friend. The country will never be right until our churches get right. And our churches will never get right until our families get right. It all comes back to the home. Get our homes right. That will straighten the church out. The churches can straighten the country out. That's the way it works. Let's get our homes the way they should be. And Dad, that starts with you. Get your life where it should be. Heavenly Father, I thank you for speaking to hearts this morning. I'm praying, God, that you'll help each one of us whose hearts you've spoken to to respond to you this morning. That these next few moments, holy decisions will be made for you. I pray, Lord, that we'll leave this place in a few minutes different than when we came in and resolve to be men of God. Lord, have your way now in every heart and life, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist is going to play. As she plays, whether Bob will sing, God has spoken to your heart. Have Respond to him this morning, way, will you? Lord, That's have right. thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all oh power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. Thank you, ushers, to get the bookmarks ready and the uh, grab one of those bottles back there, would you, somebody, and run it up here. You run it up here, Brother Taylor, or walk real fast. He chooses to walk fast. All right. <laughs> Bookmark is John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And on the back is how to experience new life in Christ. Going to go through the plan of salvation there. And uh, that's each one each fellow to have one of those this morning. Just put your hand up in the air. We'll give one of those to you right now. And uh, I want you to take one with you. And then we got the big daddy size of dad's cream soda here, all right? 
It says Big Daddy size, so there you go. Got one of those for you when you leave today, too, okay? Just uh, go by the back there. You, who's going to pass those out? Right there, Brother Bob or Brother Don, Brother Bill? Just kind of filter by them. They'll give you your own bottle to carry out. Boy, oh, boy. That doesn't sound so good, does it? <laughs> don't, don't tell anybody that's okay. It stays right there, all right? Amen. All right. Well, I hope you have a great afternoon, and I uh, look forward to seeing you back here tonight at 630 uh, for the evening service. All right, let's stand together. We'll have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. Thank you, God, for the good spirit here in this place, and thank you for meeting with us this morning. Thank you for decisions that were made for you today. Lord, we love you. I pray you'll give us a good afternoon. And Lord, I pray that You'll direct us back tonight for the evening service and prepare our hearts for what you have for us this evening. And we'll thank you for it. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join heads with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You are dismissed. We'll see you tonight.